Hello, Gary Steerman. Time for another Prophecy in the News Daily Update. This one recorded for Friday, June the 1st, and it is my purpose today to show that there is outright chaos in and around Israel uh, as we speak. Uh, I'm holding here a report, uh, uh, this one datelined May 30th, uh, Obama nixes French-Saudi plan to finish Assad by bombing his palace. So there it is. Uh, we've, we've talked about Isaiah 17 so many times, which, in which the Bible prophesies that Damascus would be reduced to a ruinous heap. And here from uh, uh, a Middle East news source, U.S. President Obama recently vetoed a detailed Franco-Saudi plan for ending President Bashar Assad's rule by means of a massive airstrike against his palace that would, at one fell swoop, wipe him and his family and his top leadership out. Their plan was for the uh, presidential palace uh, situated atop Mount Kasun, northwest of Damascus, to be de devastated by French warplanes uh, taking off from Charles de Gaulle, the aircraft carrier that is currently uh, in the Mediterranean. And so French, a French carrier would launch airplanes that would bomb the palace of Bashar Assad. But that was called off. Make no mistake, however, the Bible does predict that at a certain point in the future, there is going to be a major conflagration there. Now let's uh, switch to inside Israel. From Israel Today magazine, datelined uh, May 31st, uh, Ehud Barak, defense minister of Israel, has openly stated in a speech that Israel must surrender Judea and Samaria. And let me read the first couple of paragraphs of this report. Israel Defense Minister Ehud Barak on Wednesday, that's a couple of days ago as this is released, made what many uh, uh, believe to be a diplomatic blunder when he suggested that if a final uh, peace status agreement cannot be reached with Palestinian Arabs, Israel may have to unilaterally surrender Judea and Samaria just as it did with Gaza. And of course, you all remember, uh, not far back in history, the, uh, the Israelis walked out in unilateral disengagement from Gaza, just giving it to Hamas and Fatah. And of course, the, the, the rest is history. It was absolutely foolhardy. But the plan was, we'll give that piece of ground to our enemies and they will be so grateful to us that they will make peace. Well, you know what's happened since. Gaza has become a launching ground for enemy rockets. Now Barak has, is, uh, Ehud Barak is suggesting that uh, perhaps uh, peace could be attained by giving up Judea and Samaria. Uh, here's a quote, quote, one wonders how there are people willing to toy with such a dangerous uh, idea after the utter failure of the unilateral disengagement from Gaza. This is from uh, Education Minister Gideon Sa'ar and the Times of Israel. Well, that's inside the land of Israel. And so we have a report from inside, a report from, uh, from outside. Here's another one from outside Israel. Uh, this, and it, this one is a quote from an Iranian. <clears throat> Syrian military, uh, Syria military intervention would engulf Israel. The Iranians are, of course, the chief uh, upholders and supporters and suppliers of arms and money and, and uh, just, just generally uh, supportive intent. The Iranians are, are, are the best friends of Syria. Quote, any crisis caused by a military invention, uh, in intervention in Syria would engulf Israel, Iranian Parliament Speaker Ali Larjani warned last Wednesday. Uh, according to the Tehran Times. Larjani's comments came as the U.S. hinted at bypassing the U.N. to put at en an end to Syria's 14-month assault on its opposition. Speaking to reporters, after international mediator Kofi Annan's dep deputy Jean-Marie Guéheno gave a 15-nation council a bleak assessment of the impact of Annan's efforts to halt the violence in Syria. Kofi Annan 
Uh, Secretary General of the United Nations has suggested a plan for initiating peace in Syria. Uh, Syria. The, U the uh, uh, UN soldiers stepped off the boats and planes, walked into Syria, and have had absolutely no effect on the ongoing uh, difficulties there. Quote, it seems that the US, United States and the West are seeking to pave the way for a new crisis, said the Iranian. The response came from uh, United Nations Ambassador to the UN, Susan Rice. Uh, she said there are three ways the Syrian conflict could end. The first would be if Syrian President Bashar Assad's government decided to comply with its obligations under Anand's six-point peace plan. Well, that didn't happen and it's not going to happen. The second option would involve the Council taking action to pressure Damascus to fully comply with the Anand plan. And neither of those scenarios is likely at all. Leaving the third, in the absence of either of those two scenarios, said Susan Rice, there seems to be only one other alternative, and that is indeed the worst case, uh, adding that it was unfortunately looking like the most probable. And uh, what would that worst case be? That's when the violence escalates, the conflict spreads and intensifies, it involves the countries in the region, and it takes on increasingly sectarian forms. And we have a major crisis not only in Syria, but in the region. In such a case, Rice said, the Anand plan would be dead, Syrian violence would become a proxy conflict with arms flowing in from all sides. So uh, our uh, UN uh, ambassador to the United Nations, Susan Rice, is predicting essentially chaos uh, on a rising scale. <clears throat> Seven Western powers, here's another news release from the region. Seven Western powers expel Syrian ambassadors. France, Britain, Germany, Italy, Canada and Australia have expelled the ambassadors from Syria. Spain followed their lead, saying that Madrid rejected the escalation of violence in Syria. So they have sent all their ambassadors back, and war is being uh, rather openly hinted at. Finally, I want to remind you of something we've been talking about uh, now for a couple of weeks. Remember, the Israeli Knesset is now under the uh, operating under the terms of what has been called a super coalition. Ninety-four of the Knesset's 120 seats are now being controlled by Benjamin Netanyahu. And by the way, this is a rock-solid wartime coalition. And really, the last time we saw anything at all approaching this was in May of 1967, just prior to the uh, infamous Six-Day War. So Israel is putting herself on a war footing. Uh, uh, and I, in our uh, State Department, uh, our United Nations ambassador to the UN, they're all powerless. They're saying there's nothing we can do to stop a mutual uh, arms battle, an arms race in the Middle East that will ultimately result in open warfare a very large-scale open war, bringing me back to perhaps the best-known prophecy concerning this period, Zechariah chapter 12, when the uh, nations of the world placed themselves in siege around Jerusalem. Uh, Zechariah 12, 6 says, and in that day I will make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood and a torch of fire in a sheaf, and they shall devour all people round about on the right hand and on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. And so from the outside, it looks like Jerusalem uh, is weak and wavering. Uh, the defense minister, uh, Ehud Barak, has even suggested unilaterally giving up Judea and Samaria. And yet the Bible says that uh, at a certain point, in the very near future, I believe, Israel is going to 
catch fire and their army will defeat the armies of the nations that have come and, and laid siege around Jerusalem. So uh, it's an amazing time in which we live. It, it gives me no pleasure at all to talk about these things uh, because I would love to see peace continue in the world. But international events and the Bible tell me that something is coming and coming rather quickly. We'll keep watching these things as the days roll by, and uh, we hope you're watching too. Eric Stearman, keep looking up. <laughs>